Hey guys, just wanted to talk quickly about the latest software update that's going out for Tesla vehicles, which is 2024.14.6. Now this particular update, like the previous 14.3, is targeted at the Ryzen-based Tesla vehicles. So if you have an older vehicle, um, it won't apply and is currently going out to US vehicles. It seems to be totally targeted to US vehicles, so it's bringing them up to the same version 12 user interface that 14.3 brought to Australia and other countries. So also currently only relevant to US vehicles, unfortunately, is that the new 2024.14.6 will now give those vehicles that were on the .8.x uh, branch the ability to access FSD version 12. So that means they can now get their uh, free trials if they haven't already, um, and also be able to use the latest version 12 FSD, which is looking fantastic. On top of that, the version 24.6 now brings the Tesla Vision Parking Assist features to the USS equipped vehicles in the US. Now, for my Australian colleagues and uh, viewers, unfortunately, um, this is only available to the Model 3 Highland, the 2024 Model 3 at this stage, but um, should be coming in one of the next next updates for the Australian audiences as well. It's a great feature. Um, I like it better than USS. It's, it does a lot of things that USS can't. Um, the particular vision you're watching at the moment is from an older version. Now, the visualizations are general, seem to be gradually improving, but um, I know some people expect a pretty picture with all the colors and stuff, but I think this is perfect for what you need. The heat map um, gives you a good indication of how close you're getting to things. You get curbs, you get um, parking lines that you can't get with USS, and curbs are particularly a, uh, an important feature for people who don't want to curb their wheels. So um, yeah, this is a great addition for those that do have USS and have been waiting to be able to use this particular technology. This is just a quick demo that I did a while back, um, just reversing between two tight parked cars. Um, and yeah, it was great. And this is a quick view of what it looks like today with the new version 12 interface and being able to view it at full screen, um, which gives you even better ability to zoom and, and see what's around you. So again, this video is aimed at my US viewers um, in relation to 14.6. However, I'll run through the video now that I prepared for the Australian viewers based on version 14. Dot three, which will cover all of the other improvements that you'll see apart from the two that I just uh, outlined that uh, will be also applicable to US customers that have a Ryzen based vehicle that is capable of running the version 12 user interface. The first one is addition of Audible. Some visual updates, that's a whole new UI, um, some good improvements there full screen vehicle controls, larger playback controls, autopilot driving visualizations. That's something that the US cars have had where they can expand those. So that's been added to now to Australian vehicles. Sleek and more compact driving mode strip and redefined driving readouts. Some updates to Spotify, uh, Q and playback speed. That's been one that's been uh, asked for by a lot of people, the playback speed one. Hands-free trunk, unfortunately, I can't demonstrate. It requires ultra-wideband, uh, which currently Tesla's only implemented for iPhone. So iPhone 11 Plus has that. Uh, a lot of the Androids do have it. I have, I've got an Android, but it hasn't been implemented yet, so coming soon. And that'll essentially, it's an option you can set. You stand behind the trunk and stay still for a couple seconds. It'll make a, a, a chime noise. Um, so if you don't want to open the trunk, you step away. If you do, you stay there. So if your hands are full, it'll open the trunk for you, which is a great addition. Preview of sentry mode. So if, you, if your vehicle alarm triggers, 
you can look at the uh, the footage on the phone to see what's going on um, see if it's actually a valid alarm or not another one that's been well sought after is the speed camera chime so now when you're approaching a speed camera you can set that and, and you'll have to set it the first time so navigation speed camera chime that will alert you um, audibly that a camera is coming up which is a great one as well another good one average speed zones it'll show you your average speed and the distance remaining in that speed zone not that any of us speed but uh, it's good to have that information trip progress bar uh, it shows you your progress bar towards the end of your your trip along with the congestion and that kind of thing the other good thing with this one it, it also does it in the back screen so if you've got the kids there with the uh, are we there yet you can just tell them to look at the screen and they can see what the progress is this one I think is um, handy as well um, so now it gives you a bit more of a, a, a alert to let you know there's a better route available I think that's it's a good thing it, I've, ha I've had it in the past where it reroutes and you don't notice it so this should hopefully be a, a good improvement wiper controls yeah I know um, wipers still aren't perfect although mine have been really really good for the last couple of months now in fact during rain events I'd say they've been better than any car I've had with with rain sensors the um, speed they adjust to the different volumes of rain that's a common complaint with all vehicles that, that have rain sensors um, it's been fantastic and you go under an overpass it immediately stops and starts again when you come back out there's um, been some really good improvements in the wipers um, I do get the occasional draw wipe still so they're not perfect and I know they haven't been completely consistent though I'm seeing more and more people say the same thing now that the auto wipers have been excellent for the last month or two so hopefully I can continue to improve that but in the meantime now you can hit your wiper button on the on the steering wheel sorry that one there and in the case of stalks the other one on the end of the stalk and use the left scroll wheel up and down rather than going side to side which is a bit easier going up and down to adjust your uh, windscreen wiper speed so that's a good temporary fix or help to um, alleviate problems that people are having with their with their wipers uh, again that will hopefully get so sorted out soon but yeah we'll just have to wait and see but um, it's been very promising what I've seen so far the always security improvements um, other updates so when you park you can expand the browser to full screen easier access to car wash mode rear passengers seeing the trip details you can swipe to delete sentry mode recordings now valet mode on will alert you on the phone when it gets uh, when it gets unlocked or shifted out of park a few more game updates and the back screen now turns off automatically when there's no passengers which is good saves a bit of energy so those are all the um, recorded updates there one that wasn't listed there and I'll do a drive later this afternoon or this evening to show you but the font size and the layout for the um, speed is much better this, the font size is greatly in, increased um, which yeah I haven't a problem with it in the past but some people sort of miss the the front head-up display but I think that will alleviate those people that uh, struggle with the um, speed being on the main screen it's 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 a much bigger and very prominent um, they've also moved a few things around um, I'll show you that when we drive but the uh, regen bar is on the right hand side now for example um, you've got these bigger controls down here which is great you can go into your playlist and see your um, up next um, and you can also drag that across and see the driving visualizations or the map however you want it uh, one thing I would have liked to have seen um, some of the US models I, I believe still have this I'm not sure if this update changes that for them where they can actually set how much screen they want there's only there's only either that setup or that setup when you're driving you can't have anything in between so your maps up the corner here which is fine and the driving visualizations I, I like it when you're driving especially when you know where you're going or on a long trip I think it's great having the, the, the big screen for the visualizations 
but I would like to see where you could say you do two thirds of the visualizations and one third map or something like that but um, that's how it currently works another one which I'm not sure if it's a change or not I just haven't noticed it previously is they've got a customized button here on our, on our main display so we can hit customize there and drag things around um, that look uh, it may be just I hadn't noticed it previously but that looks good if it's a, if it's a new addition um, if it's not it's still good but uh, I think that's a new addition so that's good to see. So um, in the in the visualizations when you're driving, the the tail lights of other cars are definitely a lot more prominent. Uh, I'm not sure if it showed them previously, but it definitely does now. When people you know hit their brakes, you can see their tail lights and their um, indicators very much more prominently than I believe I've ever seen before. Um, and maybe they just didn't show before. I'm not sure, but um, it's it's really good now. Another change I noticed that wasn't listed is the lock sound now is considerably louder. So those who've got a, uh, a screaming goat or something similar, just be aware of that because you might give someone a heart attack. It was actually uh, quite, a, quite a lot louder than I've, I've normally had it. So it was uh, interesting. And one of the other undocumented changes is the shifter is now a much smaller swipe. So it's a lot easier, I guess, to go backwards and forwards. I also noticed that the 3D park assist or parking visualizations, maybe just because the screen's so much bigger, but um, they seem a lot better. One thing I, I would like, which uh, still hasn't happened, is a way to activate that when you're moving forward. Currently, it only really activates when you're going really slow and something gets close enough. But um, and the trick I do to to avoid that or to when I'm parking, like if I want to see the lines when I'm parking forward, so I'll be driving in through the bay behind. I'll just quickly swipe reverse and forward again um, as I'm moving forward it doesn't really slow you down that much and it brings up the um, visualization nicely but it would be great if we had a little button we could push just to activate that when we wanted to um, it's only a small thing it just helps to see the lines as you as you're parking I like it but I do find that, that that's even better than it was before unfortunately we don't have the auto park yet which is tied to the um, FSD stack but hopefully that's coming soon for Australian vehicles but certainly I don't miss anything going from USS to uh, to this system I think it's a much better system and with the auto park it's um, even better so uh, I'm very keen to see that this is where you activate the speed camera chime so on the navigation and speed camera chime there on and off Another big one, which is, uh, I know we've had, we've had a couple of false starts on this one, but um, I've had it confirmed now from several owners of older vehicles, is that the adaptive high beams for any of the older vehicles that have the um, capability, the hardware for it, is now available. So if you've got this update, check in lights, adaptive high beams, and you should be able to turn them on there. So here's a quick look at the audible implementation i don't have a uh, account there at the moment but um, there's a bunch of free stuff that's already on there as part of the, part of the default setup okay so in the car now and i'll just show you one other feature that um, was undocumented that's uh, a new one if you're opening the trunk you can actually hit pause any time and stop it from opening any further you can set a maximum opening on the trunk anyway so i'm not sure how that's going to be really useful but um, just a, another undocumented change that's been happen that's happened in this update here's your century recordings being able to delete them with a swipe so in the car now and as i mentioned earlier there's your uh, new redesigned uh, area for where it shows speedo and other information there such as speed limits etc i didn't really have a problem with the lot the previous font size but uh, this is much better and i know some people did have problems with it um, and sort of preferred a upfront display um, personally i don't think there's any need for one uh, and this makes it even less likely that uh, anyone's going to need one so with the uh, visualizations at full screen you can really see how much the car can see it's pretty amazing especially during the day when you've got um, you know hundreds of cars around the the camera system is is quite amazing to see how much you can see I'm not sure if we'll see any brake lights it's not much traffic around but uh, that's something I'm not sure if it was there before or not 
um, definitely wasn't as prominent as it is now. And it's great. Uh, you can see the, tr the brake lights and the indicators that the car can see through the camera system. So down the bottom here, we've got the new visualization progress bar type uh, visualization for when you've got a destination put into the navigation system. The, um, it's all blue now, but during the day when there's traffic, you'll have the yellows and reds along there. So it's a good display. Um, it's also available in the back seat too. So here's your regen meter on the right hand side here. As you can see, it goes uh, in, in dark mode. It goes white as you go towards the, as you use power. And it'll go green as we regen. Obviously, it was left and right at the top there. So that's uh, that's a new change. As we pull up to the lights here, you'll see the uh, brake lights start to show up. They're a bit uh, more obvious during the day, but it definitely uh, has changed, I believe. Uh, indicators as well and it's good that it's able to differentiate between tail lights at night time to actual brake lights so that's quite impressive and you now we've got a few more cars around we can have a look around and see the um, how much you can actually see with those cameras which is again quite impressive anyhow I think that covers off on all the updates that I hadn't actually been able to show while not driving hope you enjoyed that I hope you get to the, um, this version soon and please uh, like and subscribe and share the video. Thank you.